Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really excited about today's guest because it's all about execution and peak performance and success. And if you're not motivated by the time you're done listening to our guest, something's wrong. But I would be remiss if I did not properly introduce my co-host. You know him. You love him. He's Six Sigma. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if not automating your Craigslist postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, just had, you know, four shots of espresso. I'm really excited for this interview. I feel, I feel like, I, I feel, I feel like it's going to just take me to the next level. I don't know about you. You know, it's, uh, it's probably going to talk about, I think this is going to talk about one of my favorite, um, favorite people in the world. You know what it is? What? It's Ed. You know who Ed is? No. Ed is execute with discipline. Ed, execute with discipline. You just yeah. made that up or what, what is that? No, come on, man. Make it up. It's Ed. Come on. You want, you want to know Ed. And today we're going to learn about Ed, I think. Execute with discipline. I, I remember hearing that uh, a great quote from Jocko Willink, who's like a, a Navy SEAL. Well, he, his quote was, discipline equals freedom, which is really interesting. Stru you know, people that have structure, discipline, like they think that, you know, it's going to stop them. It's actually going to pro provide them more freedom. So I'm very excited. I do want to just mention quickly that today's podcast is sponsored by postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. I remember the old days when I had to put two Craigslist postings up for my land sales. Now I can put up 128 with a touch of a button, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. If you're not automating your Craigslist postings, I'm eating your lunch. Yum, yum. All right, let's talk to today's guest, Thor Conklin from thorconklin.com. Thor Conklin is a business owner and consultant as well as a content-driven podcaster. The first company Thor created was a global risk management consulting firm that served the private equity community. I used to work in private equity. His top 15 clients had a combined revenue of $12.7 and operated in over 100 countries. His background in risk management served him well when he lost one-third of his team in the World Trade Center tax on 9-11. Since that time, he started, bought, and sold several multi-million dollar businesses, making him a sought after cross industrial resource for entrepreneurs and executives in all stages of business. Thor has a talent for slicing through the noise of everyday distractions and bringing his audience intellectual commodities like his ultimate success map, a simplistic, easy to follow guide for individuals who need to break through to the next level of achievement and get the absolute most, not just from their business, but from their lives, the psychology of success in one word from Thor is execution. Nothing you've learned matters unless you can execute. Thor Conklin, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show today. So, Thor, I mean, you've, you've done a lot. You've done a lot. Um, I, let, let's talk a little bit about 9-11 and, uh, and how that – how that sort of um, tragedy, wh how, what did you take from that tragedy and how did you propel forward? Like, I would think with such suffering, a lot of people would f go into a ball in fetal position and maybe take a couple years off and, and be like, well, what the hell is the meaning of life? But what did you do with it? Yeah, I, I didn't have time to do that. I, I think at the time I wanted to do that. I just couldn't, I just lost one third of my team and I think it's important here to kind of back up a few years because I think there's an interesting story here. And that is how I ended up not being in the Trade Center that day. That was my office. But in 1996, I was working in the private equity uh, arena, helping private equity firms buy and sell companies. And we were working on a due diligence deal. And it was one more deal had that we were working on on Halloween. 
and I had two young kids and it was the second Halloween in a row that I missed. And I said, no more. That's it. I'm not going to sell my life for a paycheck. And those paychecks were really, really good back then. That industry pays a lot. But I decided I didn't want to live like that. And in uh, 95 on Halloween, I decided I wasn't going to do it anymore. And I moved to Atlanta. And I was supposed to go back to New York to my office in the World Trade Center to World Trade 105th floor. And I was literally speaking with one of my clients and they said, hey, would you come work for us? And I'm like, well, that's a pretty interesting uh, offer. What, what do you want me to do? And they said, well, we want you to set up your own company and we want you to travel around the world and service our portfolio companies. And that was the first business that I started. But the whole reason I wasn't there that day is before that event, I had made a decision five years earlier that I was going to live my life a certain way. And it was the decisions that I made in 1995 that, quite frankly, probably kept me alive. And I wish on that day I, I had the opportunity to crawl up into a ball, but I really needed to figure out what am I going to do? I've got a business. I've lost a third of my team. I've lost a leader. I've lost the lieutenant. At, files are, are floating through the air. They're being burned as we speak. What do I do? So I had no choice but to, you know, find out who, who lived, who survived, who didn't, and, and repair it and, and move forward. Amazing. Amazing. You started as a door-to-door -door life insurance salesman. And Scott and I talk about that there's a lot of value in starting out going door-to-door -door and getting out of your comfort zone and taking an amazing amount of rejection so that when you go out and you, you know, it, you just become immune to it for yeah. you. What, what, what was that like? And then how did that kind of propel you into what you do today? Well, well, first you have to wear a suit and it was Mr. Conklin, of course, because I needed to act mature. I, I was the world's worst life insurance salesman, I think ever. Uh, there there, there weren't more no's. There were no yeses. I, I think I may have sold one policy to my grandmother or grandfather and my, and my parents. Uh, other than that, uh, it was a, not a very successful career. But it did teach me how to dig in and really start working on myself because, quite frankly, that launched a 20-year career in the insurance uh, industry that I never would have launched had I not had that experience. And when you get told no, 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 over and over again, you do, you just become immune. And you know, that's just the question of just keep going, keep going. You're just getting that much closer to the yes. So I would never change that. Uh, but boy, it was not fun. I, I think that there's something about uh, even going door to door, right? Like, I, cause I've had careers in my life. I've had, I mean, I've had three of them on, on another podcast I talked about as a kid you know, going door to door selling stuff. But then as an adult, uh, I had two careers where I went door to door to people's houses to sell them something. And there is something that, that you learn when you go and you knock on someone's door, you ring the doorbell to a, an absolute stranger and they open the door and you have to think on your feet, right? And they're going to yell at you. They're going to slam the door on you. They're going to be nice to you. Uh, you, you don't know which person you're going to get behind that door. And there's literally something that I think that builds up your resistance or, I mean, you, you really knock down every barrier that you think that exists because, you know, you, you know what it's like to be on the other side of that door when someone when knocks. Yeah, I That's recommend it everyone. It's not yeah. going to be fun, but it's going to build character that, uh, quite frankly, I don't know if you can build another way. Yeah. I mean, Mark, I mean, you know, we, we, don't, we don't ever talk about this either. We talk about all the different ways to sell land, but man, Maybe we need to go door to door. Maybe we need to start going door to door to sell land because, uh, I mean, you talk about getting outside the comfort zone. Phone calls and, and email exchanges are easy after you've gone and knocked on maybe 100 doors. I don't even know if you do 100. I, I would say do a local meetup, right? Yeah. Hey, we're going to talk about, you know, these, this land investing and have a meetup with, you know, 30 people. That might be a little warmer room, but man – that's, that's still getting outside your comfort zone. Right. Um, yeah, but I agree. Like there's, I, I, I went door to door. Um, I, when I was a kid, I, I had a little, I caught a big guy cookie company and we'd knock on neighbor's doors and we'd go outside a little bit of the neighborhood and 
you know, we were cute. So it was, the rejection wasn't that bad, but um, we got rejected. And it, it was interesting uh, to do. And then I, I had a telemarketing job one summer. Oh, did that teach you rejection? But it, it, that, that was interesting. So Thor, um, I, I want to ask you, what's the best lesson your father, your mother ever taught you? Ah, that, that's I actually never been asked that question. And, he, and here's the answer. When I was around eight years old, my father had been looking to buy a boat for years and we were fishing. I grew up in uh, New Jersey along the ocean and he was always looking for that special boat, right? And we went to boat show after boat show after boat show. And I was like, all right, dad, what about this one? No, that's not the right one. What about this one? No, it was like, it felt like it was year after year after year. Well, I was eight or nine years old and we went to this boat show and he found the boat. And I'm like, great. We can actually, you know, now get a new boat. We'd always had these used boats and he just loved it. He just loved the way it was designed. He's like, this is the one. I'm like, great, let's, let's get it. He goes, I can't afford it. I was like, wait a second. What do you, what do you mean? You, you can't afford it. He goes, I don't make enough money. And that moment in time, I decided that was never, ever going to happen to my family. So it wasn't a lesson that was said. It was a situation that burned into my soul. That's powerful. Scott Todd, I bet you grew up with a similar scarcity type of mindset. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, and I even talked about it, you know, like uh, I grew up in an old house where there was no air condition and uh, you had this, this oil furnace. I mean, I'm in Florida, so it doesn't get that cold, but you know what? It still get cold. It still gets cold, but there was no air conditioner in this house. We, we relied on fans and the windows, believe it or not, were painted shut. Like you could not open them. It was an old wooden house couldn't even open the windows. And so you talk about heat and I I tell my kids all the time, like I would lay there in that in bed at night, like sweating, trying to go to bed. And I swore to myself, like, man, when I'm an adult, I'm going to have a house that has air conditioning and my kids won't sweat. And, you know, something that gets ingrained in you that propels you. Yeah. I mean, it was a driver. I was always asking, how do I get more? How do I get more? How do I get more? Now, of course, that led to never feeling like you had enough. It was great for developing and creating assets, um, but there wasn't fulfillment. And I didn't even know it existed until a few years ago until I actually uncovered that that was a question I was asking myself every day. And it was the root of a lot of my success. So I thank my dad for that. Um, and I still get emotional talking about it uh, today. Yeah. So, Let's talk about Thor Conklin's definition of success because it sounds like you had one definition and yet it, the feeling was, hey, I've got a lot of, you know, conventional success. We would look at your life and say, oh my gosh, that guy is successful. But you internally, it sounds like, didn't feel like it was ever enough. But now it seems like you're on the other side of it. So walk us through that and what is today the Thor Conklin definition of success? Uh, Definition of success for me right now is I'm here. It's I'm alive and I'm on this side of the ground. And I mean that. I mean, I just, I thank God every single day for what I have. And I'm always looking for what to be grateful about. I mean, I'm blessed in so many different areas. It's, you know, it's funny. You, You talk with people and Everyone always compares themselves to someone that is above them, has more than them. And all we need to do is look at the other 5 billion people on this planet that don't have more than you, don't have you know, a roof over their head, don't have food to eat. So I'm, just, I'm so grateful for the opportunity every day to do what I do for a living, have the opportunity that I live in America, I'm healthy, I'm safe, um, and I, I embrace the day. Um, And it's not about, we're human beings, not human doers. Now I get a lot done and I know how to execute, but I always come back to, I'm a human being and I need to take time to be with me, to be with my family, to be with things that really count. You know, the bank account's nice and and making money's easy. There's got to be more and there is a lot more to life. Scott Todd, what's your definition of success? 
Uh, I think that Scott, it, Scott looked at me. He's like, "Are you really asking me that right well, now?" I, no, I think that um, I really think it's. I think you have to define it to be what you want it to be. You know, like you you have to. I think success is when you have achieved the things that you want to achieve, and that you realize that um, it's it's not just a straight line up to achieve those things. That there's there's going to be things that you always want to achieve. And I think that it's important that you look at it in terms of, of um, almost like a percentage, right? Like how, how many of these things have I wanted to achieve that I've achieved? And they don't have to be major, major like milestones either. I mean, think about where we've all started. Like it was a success for each one of us to walk, you know, like, but yet we do it. And so you start to look at all these little things that have gotten us to where we want to be. And I think that when you can look and say, Hey, um, you know, man, I really have accomplished a lot and not necessarily compare yourself. You know, like if I try to compare myself to you, Mark, you know, especially in this year where you're like whomping on me, it's going to be a little bit harder for me to feel successful. But when I look at all the things that I'm achieving and the, the goals that I'm achieving on my own, then it, I think that helps to propel you. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite quotes, and I say it all the time is comparison is the thief of happiness. And um, I really believe that. I, I you know, I, I don't want to compare myself to anybody. I just want to look at what I want to accomplish and, and just do my best every day and, and, and be grateful, like what Thor said. So Thor, what are some of the, the choices that you've made that made you who you are today? You know, the choice I think number one is that years ago, a mentor of mine <laughs> said something that is forever burned into my mind. And that is hell on earth would be to meet the man you could have become. That comment, that, that phrase alone drives me every single day to wake up and figure out how I can just take my game to the next level. How can I raise it just a little bit? And in doing so, who can I help? You know, I get such joy out of just being able to help others see what they don't see. And I think so often as entrepreneurs, it's so difficult. There's so much going on around us that we get stuck in our own world and we get we almost blinded to what the real issues are. And others see them easily, right? It's like, well, don't you see, there's a great uh, video on YouTube. I think it's, it's the nail in the head. This woman's complaining about her headache and she's got a spike sticking out of her head. And her boyfriend said, uh, it might be the spike. No, it's not the, sp you know. I, there's things that others around us can see. And I love having the opportunity to be able to help someone discover something on their own that they had not seen before. And then to see that growth uh, going forward when that's been identified and removed. What, what do you think defines a peak performer? Uh, a peak performer sets very high expectations for themselves first. They've got flaws. You know, we all have flaws just like everybody else. But they commit consistently to raising their game. They're not about learning, 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 learning. And I see this so often that people just go from event to event, book to book, and they consume massive amounts of information, but they don't execute on it. Peak performers take an idea. They then execute on it. They master it. They refine it. And then they go back and they pick up another piece, another skill, and they work on that. You know, I had somebody on my show recently and I said, what creates a master karate expert, guru? And he goes, you do one thing 10,000 times. And that's not fun. It's not, you know, exciting. And everybody wants to try something new and, and, and create something, uh, you know, move on to the next thing or try the next thing. Just get the basics down and just really hone it. And, and they own themselves. They take care of themselves, and their mind, their body, their spirit. And they're really focused on just getting a little bit better. Consistency. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a Japanese term I love called kaizen, right? Mm -hmm. Just incremental improvement every single day. And I really feel like, you know, Scott, I don't want to embarrass you, but you were sort of the 
the personification of somebody that took a, a model, right? And said, hey, if I get a little bit better at this every single day, it's going to move the needle in my, in my life and I'm going to execute. So a good example, like Thor, you don't know Scott, but he, he started doing kind of my land investing model. In his first year, he closed 60 deals, which is a lot to do in your first year, right? But then the next year, he did 197 deals. And we sort of, he beat me. I did 192. Son of a gun, right? But there's, a, there's an intensity. There was a focus there because the world's a big place. And Scott, for the next last two years, was completely laser focused on mastering the basics of the business. He didn't get fancy, right? He didn't, he didn't go outside of what I was teaching. Where We see a lot of that happening where people are like, well, I don't want to go to the secret county list. I want to go somewhere no one else is going, right? He just, he didn't, you know, he didn't use a different letter than I used. He did exactly what I did and just was laser focused on getting a little bit better. And it, it's, it, it's really a testament to that is the definition of peak performance, right? And, and it's and just it's that focus. So about what I'm going to do, so often it's what I'm not going to do. It's about eliminating the bad and even the good to make room for the excellent. Scott, what, what would you say is, is sort of the secret to your peak performance? Why, why, can, why, why were you able to do that and other people struggle? Well, I think, I think it's, I think uh, Thor kind of hit on it. You know, like it's one, having a higher standard, like, okay, this is the goal that I'm going to hit. And I will not rest until I achieve that one goal. You know, like literally, and we, you know, we, Mark, we talk about all the time in terms of, hey, the last thing that you want to do is to create another, you know, job for yourself. But at some point in the beginning, you need to create that other job until you can get other people on board and, and to build a team to go do it for you. So I had, I had to like, you know, get laser focused on what I wanted. I had to first know what I wanted, right? Like I just can't say, yeah, I want to achieve this, you know, passive income goal or I want to have some passive income. I needed to have a number and I needed to back into it, you know, and, and reverse engineer it, if you will, to get to the number that I needed in order to achieve the goals that I wanted to achieve. And then after that, you know, if it's, if, if the number was I needed to mail 600 offer letters a month, well then I needed to mail 600 offer letters a month. And I didn't go to bed until the 600 let offer letters were mailed a month. Okay. Like you, you just don't stop. And even when I was drowning in uh, deal flow, and even today, like I know you drown in deal flow at times, so do I, you don't stop the mailing, right? Like, because you can always make up time on that, but what people do is they get overwhelmed and they just shut down and you shut down the entire factory as opposed to think about what Lucille Ball did in the candy example. The candy kept coming, baby. They had to figure out what to do with all the candy, right? So you keep going at that level and that intensity, but you have to know where you wanna go just saying I want to do a few deals or I want to do this. It's a vague number. Vague goals produce vague results. Thor, how do you get past frustration tolerance, right? So a peak performer that comes to you and they say, look, I want to get to the next level. And sometimes they don't know what they don't know. And you say, well, you need to do these things, right? And now they're hitting, they're hitting frustration. They're going outside of their comfort zone that they're used to. How do you guide them? through that? Well, I think any business plan, first of all, should look like, or does look like, maybe it shouldn't look like, but it does look like a five-year-old took a piece of paper and a crayon and started to draw on it, right? There's, there's no straight line to success. And even if you've, whatever success you've had up to this point, the next stage is still going to look the same way. You think you finally got it figured out, but what works, you know, worked before doesn't necessarily work now. I always tell them to anticipate. This is what you're going to see. So I try to remove the frustration a little bit by pre-framing to them, look, you're not gonna have all this figured out. When you start to make these adjustments, this is what you could see. You could also see this. Sales may go down temporarily. This might happen. You're not gonna like these results, but if these things happen, we know it's working. So I think, understanding and pre-framing and, and knowing. And here's a big distinction, okay? I, I do consulting, I do mentoring, I do some coaching, but I'm not a coach. 
And I want to make a distinction there because as a business owner for the last 17 years, I've walked the path. So when I sit down with a business owner, I say, look, you're going to run into this hurdle and this is going to happen or this could have happened. And in one of my business, this happened. I'm not doing based on theory. I've been down that road. And I think there's a level of trust and comfort to know, yeah, Thor didn't read this in a book. He's lived this. I mean, I've got horror story after horror story. I put out a daily podcast and every Wednesday in 2017, I'm doing the 52 business lessons that I absolutely messed up big time. Please don't do what I did. Now, thank God there's only 52 weeks in 2017 because I'm sure I've got a lot more than 52. It's fantastic. So, Thor, tell us something we don't know about you know, execution. Well, you know, great, uh, great question. What I'd like to share with you real quick, it'll just take about uh, three minutes. I'd like to share with you my ultimate success map. And I came up with this after being frustrated with sometimes getting great results and other times not getting great results. And I said, I've got to find someone to model. I've got to create a map that will help me make sure I'm not missing any of the steps. So I was literally on the uh, train in Atlanta, the, the train that runs between the terminals. And I had been searching for this answer for close to a decade. And I'm staring, I'm looking up at the, the map that, that goes between the terminals. And I'm like, there it is. It's been on the train the whole time. I ride this train all the time. Atlanta's my home airport. And I'm like, there it is. So in Atlanta, I'll go through the steps and the terminals are going to go backwards. So first, and Scott pointed at this out earlier, you got to figure out what you want. You got to get really clear on what you want. And then next, the e-stop, you've got to come up with an efficient and an effective plan. You've got to come up with a plan that works in all areas of your life, right? I mean, you could have this wonderful plan that, look, I want to work 100 hours and I want to make a million dollars and blah, blah, blah. Oh, and by the way, I want to be at my kid's soccer game on every Tuesday at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's like people run in these silos and don't look at the entire picture. You've got to look at the entire picture. Then you've got to make a decision, D. And a lot of people think a decision is where it stops. You've got to go to the next stop, which is commit, C. And there's a big difference between decision and commitment. You know, when I wanted to go skydiving a few years ago, I decided I wanted to go. I booked a ticket. I did everything. I got on the plane. Up to that point, I had just decided that I wanted to go. When I got pushed out of the plane or the guy pulled me out of the plane, I was then committed. And I think a lot of people want things. They want success. They think they deserve success, but there are very few that actually commit to doing what it takes. And you really have to understand that. The next stop is B which is belief systems. You've got to really understand what your belief systems are because there can be things that trip you up that you don't even see part of your psychology. You grew up and mom and dad said money doesn't grow on trees. People that have money aren't nice people. Pick one. That's, that's a, a limiting belief that's keeping you from the success that uh, you want and need. And then finally, you've got to take massive action, right? You've got to act like that. This is working. Just like Scott said, even when the, deals start flowing in. You've got to keep that action about keeping the letters going out. You've got to keep that momentum going. And in business, look, one thing doesn't work. You try another thing and then another thing, another thing. And here's where a lot of people get messed up. And it happens on the train too. It's hilarious. There's another stop, which is the T terminal. T stands for time. Just because you're starting to take massive action doesn't mean that the results are going to show up immediately. You know, we, we plant the fields. We don't expect to uh, harvest the crops the next day, we've got to take care of them. It takes time. And people on the train, they get off thinking that they're a baggage claim and they step off the train, they look around, they're kind of confused, the doors close and the train continues on. Because after the time or the T gate, you end up at B or the baggage claim. And that's where you reap your, your rewards. So it's a process. You've got to stay on the train. You can't get distracted by shiny pennies or squirrels. Uh, you've got to stay the course. You've got to do the simple things every single day that aren't sexy, aren't fun, but it's what successful people do, peak performers do every day. Ah, uh, man, you really let me down there, Thor. All right, I could do it again. I could do no, it again. No, no, let, let me tell you why you let me down. 
because I know the exact, I've ridden that multiple times. A few weeks ago, I was coming back from boot camp, and guess where I was stuck at? I was stuck in Atlanta because of a Delta computer system. And I rode that train. I was looking at those letters. And I knew, I knew I was going to get you on the terminal T. And I was going to say, well, that's for Thor. But man, you even beat me to that. You even got the, the T down for time. Yeah, it just, man. when it came together, it just, uh, it, it, you asked Never, a great question. ever in my life will I be able to look at that again. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, um, and, and, you know, and with my, my clients, you know, I, I go along the ride with them. I get on the train because every single part of that, that system, it can trip you up, right? I mean, you really need an advisor, whether it's me or, or somebody else. Make sure you got somebody along the ride with you. First of all, it's more fun to have somebody along the ride uh, with you. You know, yeah, I think yeah, that, absolutely. I, the other thing that you said that I think is so powerful, you, sa you said it in a different way than I do, but I think the message is still the same, which is, you know, you, you basically talked about how you wanted to curl up in a ball and just hide, right? And a lot of times we all have this plan of what's going to happen. We, we've mapped it out in our mind. And, you know, I always like to say that you, everybody has a great plan until they get punched in the face the first time. And then, then what happens is they want to curl up in a ball and hide. They don't like it anymore. It's not any fun. And really, I think that that's the next a big piece of a peak performer is that they know that they're going to get hit in the face. They know it's not going to be any fun, but they're not afraid to lean into that punch. And then I say, like, just keep moving your feet, you know, like just keep, keep moving your feet towards your goal because it's when you stop and you stop the action, you stop all these other things, that that's where you've given up and that's where the goal is gone. Yeah, I interviewed a uh, world, uh, world record, not world record, a world champion adventure racer, Robin Benacasa. And I interviewed, they would run to the jungle for uh, four or five days. It was like a thousand mile race. And I said, you're stuck in the jungle and you don't know which way to go. And you're kind of lost. What do you do? Do you just kind of stop and kind of regroup? She goes, never. She goes, you just keep moving forward. Because when you're moving forward, the landscape changes and you see things that you don't see if you stand still. I'm like, wow, that's good. Oh, that's so powerful. That's so Scott Todd-esque about moving your feet. I mean, yeah, yeah, just keep yeah. moving forward. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, so before we get to your tip of the week, I'm going to ask you one more question. Are you ready? Yes, ready. All right. I want you to imagine you're on your deathbed, okay? And you're surrounded by your family and your friends sitting by your bedside, right? What words of advice are you going to leave them before you flatline? Do it. Just do it. Doesn't, doesn't matter the outcome, just do it. So many people go through life never doing, living it safe, trying to figure out how to stay comfortable. Get out of your comfort zone. Everything you have right now is in your comfort zone. Every single thing you want is outside of it. Get outside of your comfort zone every single day. Do what becomes uncomfortable, feels uncomfortable, and then learn to embrace the suck, that uncomfortable feeling. I did SEAL fit training a couple of years ago, uh, a year ago rather, and they always told you, <laughs> as we're sitting in the ocean freezing to death, they're like, embrace the suck. They're like, don't try to sugarcoat it, just get out of it, go do it. Because I'm telling you, I'd rather die out there and die in the comfort zone. I, I've Mark, been saying embrace the suck for years. I better trademark this thing. Mark, Mark, Mark. I think we have found the, the mix of you and I together in Thor, right? Like you and I together equal Thor. That's all, all I can say. Yeah. Uh, we're we'll, we'll, expand, we'll expand on that, Scott. Well, you know, like the same things that you say and the same things that I say, what, I mean, he even got down to your words, right? He's using, he's like paraphrasing my words, of course, but you know, it, it's all good. I mean, he's sending the same message as like the, as what the two of us, we continue to say, you know, and, but embrace the suck. That's you. That's, that's you. Yeah. And I, and I can't claim uh, credit for that. That was given to me by Mark Devine, uh, SEAL commander uh, at SEAL Fit. Yeah. No, yeah. No worries. All right. Well, Thor, we're going to put you on the spot. Your mentorship, this podcast has been phenomenal, but I want to ask you for one more tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? Okay, great. 
as business owners, as investors, you're always trying to figure out how to solve the problems that are keeping you back. The things that, you know, you're not getting the results that you want. So you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I break through? I've got to figure out how to solve this problem. Think of the biggest problem that you have in your business or your life right now. Just take a moment, write it down on a piece of paper. If you're driving, don't do that. Just think about it and think of what your biggest problem is. Now, I'm partially a mind reader. I think that 95% or more of you wrote down something that is not the root problem. It's a symptom, but you think it's the problem and you've been working to fix that problem, quote unquote, but it's just a symptom. Whether it's cash, whether it's sales, whether it's not enough deals, whether it can't find the right people, all of those are symptoms. They're not the root problem. So my tip of the day or tip of the week is spend some time this week and take that symptom for the 95% of you out there and start to peel away the onion and do an exercise to really figure out, is that really the problem or is there something else that's causing that problem slash symptom to show up? When you get to the root problem and you solve that, it's like a domino effect. Everything else gets wiped out. That's a great tip. I'm going to do that as soon as we hang up. Um, Scott Todd, your tip of the week. Man, how do, how do I how do I compete with that? I know it's hard, it's hard to follow Thor, isn't it? Man, it is. He's, he's like, I like Thor's just like I'm dropping the mic. Yeah, game bye-bye. over. Bye bye, bye bye, geeks. It. Hey Mark, uh, check out. Have I been pwned? Have you have you seen this? I'm gonna check it out. Have I been pwned? Have Have you seen this thing? Oh, okay. This you know look Pete. A lot of people use the same email addresses for websites and um, maybe even passwords. And you plug in your email address in here. And what it will do is it will tell you if if an account that you've had with that email address has been hacked and where it happened. So, you know, like when I when I go and punch in my email address here and you punch it in there, basically it says, "Uh uh-oh, You've been pawned and it shows you the four uh, breaches. And so what they're doing is they're looking at all these data breaches like Dropbox or Adobe or all these other websites. And they're telling you whether or not your username, your, your email account has been breached in terms of another account that you've had and what was breached. So, um, you know, like in my case, uh, I, I have one for Adobe where the email address, the password, hence the passwords and the usernames were, were breached. So it's a good place to go check to see like, man, if, if um, maybe I need to go and change all my passwords or how, how secure am I in this digital age? I, I just did it and I got breached by Adobe. Lovely, right? So I, yeah, lovely. So I have to go and change my password for Adobe, yeah. right? I didn't yeah. even know I had an Adobe. Well, if, if you're using the same password amongst other places, it's really, that's the indication. Oh, okay. Like, okay. Like I'll use like LastPass for my stuff, but you know, yeah, if, then that's, I do the same, but I could, if yeah. these are, uh, you know, you know, the same, same email password, then it might be good for you to go change all your passwords or look at a service like a LastPass or, you know, a password website that will make the, the password for you. That's a great tip. All right, so I'm checking on my on my account. So far, so good. All right, um, except for the one, uh, the the sales one at Frontier Properties was uh, hacked by Adobe. My tip of the week is become a peak performer. Go to ThorConklin.com, and I have a a link in the show notes, and make things happen because he's going to provide you with the necessary tools strategies and psychology needed to succeed in any area of life. He is dedicated to those who hunger for excellence and refuse to settle for anything less. Thor Conklin, are we good? Oh, we're great. This has been a lot of fun. You guys are awesome. Well, thank you so much. I want to remind the listeners, look, the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Thor Conklin to come on this podcast is if you do us three tiny little favors. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review 
to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. And look, if you're not automating your Craigslist posting, go to postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. I want to thank all the listeners. Scott, are you ready? Ready, Mark? One. Let. Oh, wait. Right. Okay, here. Ready? Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. Oh, gosh. It's just not, you know, it never improves. But it's fun to do. It's it fun is. to do. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Laura. Thank you.